a couple of words of caution when it comes to this. There are three things that I say no to. No dates, no mates, no babies. All right? No dates, no mates, no babies. It is very difficult, even if you are very seasoned in this, to hear a specific date from God. On March 4th, 2023, such and such is going to happen. I'm going to be honest, in all the years I've done this and with all of the people who I've met with, even those who are highly active in the prophetic realm, it is not common at all for them to get a specific date. God usually does not work in that way. So, no dates. Second, no mates. All right? The Lord told me that I am going to marry you. Be careful. Be careful sharing it. If he does tell you, journal it out. Pray it out. Find scriptures that follow it. The other thing is to go up to somebody and say, the Lord told me you're supposed to marry Sally. Don't do that. No. No dates, no mates. Okay? It is okay to ask him about your mate. That's fine. But just be very cautious and very use a lot of wisdom. Before you go to someone and say, the Lord told me I'm supposed to marry you. I wrote it down in my journal this morning because I've heard the voice of God. Just be very careful. Just know that if God has that person for you, guess what? God's going to tell that person too. I had a guy that I was dating many, many years ago before I went on in the mission field. He came up to me and said, Lord told me that you're my wife. And I said, then the Lord will tell me that too. Okay, so just be very, very cautious with throwing those words out. No dates, no mates, no what, no babies. And I know you might not be in this realm, but sometimes there are some people that will get a word about somebody being pregnant or who is going to get pregnant. Wonderful. This is a prophetic voice, but be very, very careful of going up to a woman and saying, the Lord told me by next year you're going to be pregnant. This is just a really, really sensitive realm especially for women who have lost babies or women who are trying to get pregnant and haven't gotten pregnant. So no dates, no mates, no babies. Understand? If the Lord tells you that Sally is going to have a baby girl next year, cool. Treasure that up in your heart. Pray for her before she gets pregnant and pray for her in your mind, in your heart. Journal it out about what that pregnancy or that prayer or, I mean, that baby might need. You know, maybe you can be that intercessor, but be very careful. And I want to probably tell you, don't go and share it with that person. Because sometimes the Lord will give us things that only we are to intercede for privately. Understand? No dates, no mates, no babies. All right, open up the journal again to the page that you had. There is one final step to all of this. And this is a fun one. So fun. With your red pen, grab that red pen, with your red pen, you are going to draw a picture of what he told you. Now, why would you do that? The mind thinks in pictures. If I say the word elephant, how many of you saw a big gray thing with ears in it, right? You did not see E-L-E-P-H-A-N-T. Oh, my goodness, that would be exhausting <laughs> if we saw every word all the time, every day. So the mind thinks in pictures. So if you want to remember something, connect it with a picture. That's why it's so hard to remember people's names. So have you ever noticed that? Yes. Because most names don't connect with a picture. Unless maybe it's like, you know, whatever. But anyway, that's why you need to draw a picture. It is so cool because I can go back for you multiple days and even multiple years and tell you different pictures of what the Lord has said to me. And it's also cool because as you're in Walmart or the grocery store going down getting your Cheerios, he will sometimes just flash a picture into my mind. And then I can remember what word it was that he had given me, and then I know what I'm to share with somebody else. So we're going to draw a picture. No words. You're not allowed to write Superwoman across your picture, okay? No words. And you're only going to get 45 seconds to do it. So it's going to be a fast picture, okay? I don't need some super Picasso painting here. 
And maybe you're really great at drawing. If that's you, super, it's going to be great. If you're not great at drawing, laugh at yourself like I do. And then you're going to remember the picture even better. I literally remember this lesson that he gave me where it was about trusting in the Lord. And I drew a penny and I had Abraham Lincoln on it and like his nose was huge. Like it took over the whole penny. So, and I always remember that. But like that is one of the things in my life that is a pillar of my life is how I trust in the Lord. So maybe he was trying to make that correlation for me. So go ahead and look at what he told you and then draw a picture of it. Go. Okay, about 10 more seconds. All right, finish that picture up. Now, how do we feed the enemy? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So now what I want you to do is show your picture to your neighbor, just your picture, and tell them what it is that God said to you. Don't read it for them. Don't read it. Show them the picture and then tell them what it is that God said to you. Go ahead. And tell him what God said to you. Yep. Yep. Show her your picture and tell her what God said to you. your pictures show it to me oh my oh wow this is powerful words of the Lord I can see hope you guys is giftedness is in preaching and evangelism Just, it's not an art that's nice I, is it a frog or a person oh. <laughs> I like it 
Very nice. Okay, somebody who didn't share before, show your picture to everybody and then tell us just a summary. Don't read it for us, just tell us a summary. Who didn't go before? Go for it. Yep, show it to us. <laughs> That's actually really good. Thank you. Okay, and what did the Lord say to you? Don't read it, just tell us. Um, I uh, was, when I was thinking of the, the picture out of the Jesus part, a picture of a guy pushing a smaller guy on a swing popped in my head. And so, and it's the other part of that in the thing I wrote too. That he's, he's the one pushing you? We had said that, oh, and I, I'm not supposed to say what he said, right? No, you can't. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Well, you just can't yeah. read it to me. Gotcha. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. So good, right? Okay, who else? Who didn't go earlier? Who didn't share earlier? Just share your picture. Oh, you both are like looking at each other. <laughs> so now you both get to go. Okay, what's your picture? Mine was so hard. It was very generic. Okay, that's good. And what was that, that you're loved? Yep, great. How about you? Um, mine was like a heart and I drew like steps. Uh, I was just praying about how like how it's gotten down every step and every path that I take. Um, uh-huh. Okay. But it was just it. Perfect. Thank you for leading me into the next thing. That's great. She said, and then he told me to draw a tree, but I have no idea why. What should we do with that? Wait Ask him. Oh. Father, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> this is good. Father, what do you want to tell me right now about this image of a tree that you showed me? Now, here's the fun part about God. Sometimes he will answer your question directly and say, it's like you being a tree planted by still waters, and I want you to know that I'm going to nourish you through all the things that I give to you. Or he might go off and talk about something completely different. He's God. Let him do that. Now, I gave you two different pens because you're supposed to use them as a conversation. Now, we didn't do that earlier. We just did the hearing the voice of God part. But guess what? After he's given his reply, you then pick up your color pen, your black or blue pen, and you reply. And then guess what he's going to do? Reply. This is a conversation. And this is vitally important. How many of you would have a good, or have, have a good relationship with your best friend if you didn't have dialogue? It wouldn't work, right? You need a two-way conversation. And you don't have to draw the picture part, but let me tell you, I'm very grateful for it because my mind definitely thinks in pictures, and it's then a continual reminder for me of what he's been telling me. All right, so now we're going to do a little... Yes, go for it. Where should we let the conversation stop? Should it stop with them or us? Ooh, where should you let the conversation stop? You don't ever have a plan with your friend, right? You never know. You just let it go. Yeah. Might stop with you, might stop with him. Who knows? Okay, any other questions about how to hear the voice of God before we transition a little bit? No? All right. So let's review a little from yesterday. This is going to play right into what we've been doing. So I want for you, again, now that we've done this, we're just going to review a little bit, to write down things that you love. Do it again. Write them down. Write them down. Write them down. 60 seconds. Write down things that you love. In red or black? Let's do black. Write down things that you love. Could be things you love to do, people you love, thing, anything. Ministry you love to do. Things that you love. Just make them bullet points. Ten more seconds.
Okay, you've got a few things on your list. Now, we know from yesterday and from Scripture that we've been created in the image of God. And then in Psalm chapter 37, verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, learning what you learned today, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. We've been created in his image. If you have a desire or something you love, whose desire and love is that? God's. Correct. So he's put these things in a heart for a reason. So now I want you to draw. Oh, can I use this? This would be great. I want you to draw a boat. All right? As we talked yesterday, you know, and it can just be like one of these really fancy boats like Man, mine. Black. Black. Psalms chapter 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. 37, verse 4. Yeah, you're going to draw a boat. Oh, big boat. I mean, just on your paper underneath the, uh, the things that you love. Don't make fun of anybody's boats. Just draw a boat. All right, now that you've got your boat, yesterday we talked about Peter. Do you remember Peter? Do you remember the power pose? Do I need to make you do it again? No? Okay. In order to get the most benefit out of something, what do you need to do? You've got to take it out of the box, right? Peter got to experience the miracle because Peter got out of the boat. So let's look at the things that you love and what is something within the ministry realm that you could do that you would just say, you know, it's just inside the boat. So let's say that something on your paper, it just says kids. You love kids. So what's something that just, you know, you could teach Sunday school? Doesn't really require you to really get out of the boat maybe to go and do Sunday school. So what is something that you could do? Pick something on there. Maybe you love to cook, right? You could invite me over for dinner. That's not that outside of the boat. That's just something simple you could do in the boat. Okay? So... What is something that's in your comfort zone that's already in alignment with what you love that you could do? So write that thing in the boat. Teach Sunday school. Invite Jungle Jen over for dinner. Hand out a bag of Skittles to people on the sidewalk like I talked about yesterday. Oh, sure, you can do more than one. Fine. Okay, so give me an example. Who's got something inside the boat? Go for it. Movie nights. Movie nights. Yep, you could do a movie night, right? Not really that far outside of the boat, but still within your realm of love, right? Great. Who else? What would you do? Performing. Performing. Cool. There you go. Still inside the realm. You love to do it. It's a desire of your heart. Excellent. What's one more? Working with my kid. Working with your kid. Okay. Seems good. Oh, okay, well, they can be your kids, so that would be working with your kid. Okay, got it. So, Scripture tells us to be faithful with a little, and what will he do? He'll give us much. So we have to start somewhere in ministry. You can start with these things inside the boat. Now, go a little bit farther with me. What is something that you think God is calling you to do based upon your loves, right? What is something he's calling you to do that you'd be like, Jen, that's pretty outside of the boat. That's going to take some faith for me to do it. But I, it's a desire of your heart. But it's going to require some faith. For me, I knew that I wanted to be a missionary when I was eight years old, right? So inside the boat was evangelism. I had no problem with sharing Jesus with other people. I'd just go around and tell people about Jesus. That was easy for me. But then when he said, okay, now it's time to go overseas in another language, in another country, okay, now we're going to have to get out of the boat a little bit because now this is going to require something I don't have, which was money, and now it's going to require a skill level that I hadn't gone to school yet for. It was going to require me to have faith. So what is something that you feel God is calling you to do 
But it's going to take some faith. It's going to require you to get out of the boat. Write it outside the boat somewhere. Write it out here. All right, who's got something outside of the boat? Outside of the boat. Let's defeat the enemy. What's he calling you to do outside of the boat? Go for it. Follow his will anywhere it leads you. Okay, yeah. What might that look like within the realm of what you love to do? What's something that that would require? Um, music, apologetics, discipleship. So mm. wherever it takes you. Okay, yeah, here you go. What else? What's outside of the boat? What's going to require you to have faith? What'd you put? Uh, preaching the word of God. Preaching the word of God. Where? I don't know. I don't know. All right. But that would be outside of the boat, yeah? It would be, yeah. Yeah. But you know he's calling you to do it? I feel like he has to. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, who else? What's outside of the boat? Okay, yeah, like reaching out and discipling to your extended family. That would be outside the boat. That could be terrifying. That would require faith. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, who else? What do you have? What's outside the boat? It's calling me Yeah. Uh, I just thought about music. Music, okay. What do you mean? Could just be like for fun music, whether it's, it's your stuff or worship or whatever. Uh huh. I don't know. I'm just trying to just look fun music sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So that would be outside of the boat. I get that. Yep. Yep. Uh, go ahead. What do you have? Public speaking. Public speaking. There you go. That would be outside the boat, right? It's going to require you, yeah, to be dependent on him. And let me tell you, where you are weak, he is strong. That should encourage you. Where you are weak, he is strong. So when you take that step outside of the boat, guess whose strength has to come in? God's. And that is a very exciting place to be. Those other disciples yesterday, they all stayed in the boat. And they still worshipped God, right? But who was the one that got to experience the miracle? Peter did because he got out of the boat and all of a sudden he was doing something that his own strength could not do. And all of a sudden he got to experience a miracle. Alright, now we're going to take it one last step. Flip your page over. A clean, fresh page. And I want you to draw me a picture of what it would look like if God did immeasurably more than you could ever ask for or imagine with the calling that he's placed on your life. What would it look like if God did immeasurably more than you could ever ask for or imagine with that public speaking ministry? What would that look like? You draw the picture. What would it look like if God did immeasurably more than you could ask for or imagine with that music talent? What would it look like? Just draw a picture, no words. No words. Go for it. Black. What would it look like if God did immeasurably more than you could ever ask for or imagine? But show me a result. Show me a result. Okay, for example, for me, I told you, like, it was, um, uh, I already had the desire and uh, calling for evangelism, right? So I was evangelizing. This is my mouth. I was evangelizing to the people. That's inside the boat. Well, then he calls me to go over to another country to do it over there. So now we have overseas. These are the seas. And now I'm doing it over here with my big mouth, Okay. Now, what would it look like if God did immeasurably more than I could ever ask for or imagine 
now we have multiple churches in the jungles of the Amazon of Brazil. So when and if, no, when, God does immeasurably more than you could ever ask for or imagine with your calling, what's it going to look like? Once you have finished your drawing, you'll pick up your red pen and open your Bible. And underneath your picture, write out the verse, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Write the whole verse out in red. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church. Mm -hmm. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And then once you're finished writing it, you can close your journal. We'll pick up again with it later. You can take just a couple more minutes break before the next session. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Write it in red. The whole verse, not just the reference, the whole verse. 